In the year 1883, the Euros did not exist, but the home nations did, and they fought over who dominated Europe, and by fight I mean kick a ball around, and by Europe I mean the British Isles. The year is 1927, and 28, and 29, and 30, and some countries are fighting over who dominates Europe, more specifically Central Europe. Wait, wow, what if we like had one big European competition for national teams instead of all these small ones, said some French guy? Let's go, Euro time. Wait, UEFA doesn't exist yet. Do you exist yet? No. Do you exist yet? No. Do you exist yet? No. Do you exist yet? Yes. Do I exist? Not anymore. But UEFA are bros and staged the first European Championship in Delaunay's home country France so he can follow all the games from his coffin. The trophy even shares his name. <coughs> what an amazing coincidence. Everyone enters except England because they don't feel like it. Spain don't feel like playing against the Soviet Union due to a polite disagreement over which form of government is good and which is an evil virus of Satan. Hosts France get a brilliant start, obliterating Yugoslavia 4-0, but the Soviet Union won in the end. Francesco Franco wants to invite the Soviets for another fruitful political discussion, so UEFA award the 1964 hosting rights to Spain, who ends up winning the debate when you least expect. In 1968, the first match is cancelled since the referee has an extreme hangover and decides the game with a coin toss instead of actually playing it. The final was played though, but Italy don't win at first, so they just keep playing until they do win. So uh, that's pretty nifty, I would say. Let's play Who Wants to Be European Champions? It's West Germany. Wanna know who's not European Champions? Czechoslovakia. At least until Antonin Panenka changes that, with a Panenka. What an amazing coincidence. Shin up West Germany, at least Miller scored a lot of goals. The other one. You know what would be great, asked UEFA, if the Euros logo was changed, which it is now. Let's also double the number of teams while we're at it. Fine, said Greece, who somehow qualified. Wanna know who also qualified? West Germany. And they win the whole thing. Unfortunately, the matches were so boring that the fans rioted. The Netherlands easily secured qualification for Euro 1984. I mean, there's just no way Spain would beat Malta by 11 goals after only leading 3-1 at halftime. With the help of Dynamite, Denmark have finally stopped being crap at football. Wanna know who's also not crap at football? Portugal. Wanna know who's also also not crap at football? Michel Platini. Congratulations, Platini. I sure hope you don't tarnish your legacy later on or something. Oh, and could we please remove the boring third place playoff, please? Okay, thanks, bye. The Netherlands obliterate Cyprus in the 1988 qualifiers, and since UEFA are sadists, they force a rematch. In a stroke of genius, France protect their title by intentionally failing to qualify. Wanna know who did qualify? Ireland. The other one. Well done, Ireland. The Netherlands have a pretty good player. Varko van Basten. Varko van Basten. Marco van Basten. And he's so tired that he scores a decent volley in the final. West and East Germany use polymerization to fuse themselves into a stronger team. Let's check in with how the Soviet Union is doing. It's gone. But they rebrand and hope no one notices, despite not existing anymore. Austria do exist, and they lose to some Danish islands that don't even have a proper football pitch. Sweden lends them a stadium, and UEFA are so impressed by its quality that they award 1992 hosting rights to Sweden. UEFA award Denmark a spot at the tournament since Yugoslavia are on the naughty list. Denmark dominates so much that they force UEFA to change the rules. Time for another expansion. Oh, and maybe let's have three points for a win instead of two? Okay, thanks. The revolutionary golden goal rule is also implemented to ensure teams will be motivated to play offensive football during extra time. Say. The Czech Republic and Croatia reach the knockout stage despite being newborns. Well done. The Czechs even reach the final, but lose to Germany due to the universally loved golden goal rule. Let's try two hosts. UEFA are extremely concerned about Dutch hooliganism, but thankfully only English fans are violent. Belgium are eliminated in the group stage. I wonder if this will lead to any long-term consequences. Yugoslavia are back. It's basically Serbia, but don't worry about it. They're pretty good and beat Spain 3-2. Nope. Norway do beat Spain, but are still eliminated. Don't worry, Norway. I'm sure you won't have to wait long to qualify again. Portugal and Italy dominate, but eventually lose to France, who win the tournament like they had anime plot armor. Yugoslavia failed to qualify despite their rebrand. And Georgia should probably sort out their floodlights. The Czech Republic are, like, really good. Sweden and Denmark reach the knockout stage amidst match-fixing accusations from fair-play giants Italy. Greece qualify as outsiders, but I doubt they'll be able to do much. Just getting to win the whole thing. Managed by a king. I didn't know Greece was still a monarchy. Don't cry, Ronaldo, you're gonna make me star too. At least your goalkeeper invented the new revolutionary technique of playing without gloves. Germany were eliminated in the group stage again. They couldn't even beat powerhouse Latvia. I wonder if this will lead to any long-term consequences. Serbia and Montenegro use defusion to become Serbia and Montenegro. Two separate entities. Armenia and Azerbaijan are also two entities. And they have slight beef. Scotland failed to qualify despite beating France twice. Well done. But look on the bright side. England also failed to qualify despite some brilliant goalkeeping. Iceland don't qualify either. 
Hopefully they can improve in the future. And hopefully the Danish fan apologizes to the referee he attacked. Turkey enjoys some anime plot armor comebacks before narrowly losing to Germany. And look at that rain. The Netherlands emphatically dominate Group C and no one can stop them. Except Russia. Then Spain stops Russia and wins the title. Serbian fans get put in the naughty corner after starting a riot against Italy. Poland and Ukraine host the tournament. Hopefully they'll both enjoy many decades of peace. The Netherlands are not that great anymore, but Spain are, and they become the first team to successfully defend the Euro title. Well done. Italy impressively reached the final despite not being able to hit the ball properly. Where have I seen that odd technique before? Remember when Greece won the Euros? Now they can't even beat the Faroe Islands. Serbian fans are mean again because Albanian fans show a mean flag. Montenegro are also played in the naughty corner due to rioting, and Croatia joined them for being racist. You know what would be really great? If the Euros were really big, which they are now. And let's go back to only having one host nation. Remember when Iceland lost to Liechtenstein? They're good now, not dumb. They even beat England despite having the population of Cardiff. Here's a summary of the game by a renowned Icelandic football analyst. <laughs> Wales finally qualify for something, and they do pretty well. Portugal can't even win a game, but they still win the tournament, so I wonder why Ronaldo's crying. Shouldn't he be happy? There's a new hip tournament called the Nations League, and it enables powerhouse North Macedonia to make their debut. I wonder when South Macedonia will qualify. Let's go back to more than one host, UEFA say. How about 13? Actually, let's make it 12, because Belgium can't build a stadium. Well done, Belgium. Actually, actually, let's make it 11, because that's the name of my favorite Stranger Things character, and because Dublin maybe, possibly, perhaps, arguably, won't be able to have fans in attendance. Everything will go smoothly. It's not like a global pandemic will force the tournament to be postponed for a year and make international travel a logistical and public health nightmare. And let's use the universally loved VAR and allow bigger squads and more substitutions. It's a great tournament. Everyone plays with their hearts. Denmark plays with their hearts so much that Christian Eriksen's heart stops working, but fortunately it starts working again and he survives. Look at Ukraine's nice kit, I'm sure no one will mind that, but Ronaldo really minds beer bottles. Everyone wants to watch the match between France and Germany, some fans even paraglide into the stadium. Germany lost despite their rainbow powers. What's this? Just another magic Monday. Remember Denmark who were almost eliminated in the group stage? They're in the semi-final now. Now they're gone. Some of the refereeing decisions almost weren't controversial. Spain are gone in the other semi-final. England fans are so eager to watch England lose another final that they storm Wembley. Oh well, at least they aren't racist to their own players. It did come home in the end, and by home I mean Rome. 